Hey guys, Steve Boyer. Today I got a look at some Diné gameplay. We're going to be talking a lot about the shell characteristics of the British cruiser line uh, throughout this video. I do have Fraser on the screen here. He's who I'm planning on going to war with in this line. I think I would recommend giving a strong look to Tenet. He's going to have an extra 10% reduction on your rudder shift roughly if, once you get him up to about a level 11 or so. And he'll have some more speed. This is going to increase your survivability. This is not going to be the most beginner friendly line due to the squishiness of the ships. Uh, lightly armored. And if you've played the Dene, you know, it will go down uh, rather quickly. I haven't played the line yet, obviously, but I'm expecting it to be somewhat similar up and down the line. So British cruisers, barring any uh, premiums such as the Belfast, will be firing strictly AP rounds. These are short fuse British AP rounds. Uh, without getting too heavily into the gun characteristics in this game. Basically when an uh, AP shell penetrates a certain thickness of armor, then it arms, and then it has a fuse. I think normally it's .33 seconds. And if then after that goes off, the shell will detonate. Sometimes the shells will pass through the ships with normal fuses like that uh, before they explode, and that's when they're going to get overpens. Because these have shorter fuses, they're going to ignite pretty much on impact. So, very effective against broadside cruisers in particular, but we'll be shooting at some non-broadside cruisers and talking about that. Destroyers need to look out. Uh, even, they're, even though they're weakly armored, the British AP shells are quite effective against them, and we'll be seeing that throughout these games as well. Battleships, when you're shooting them, you're going to be wanting to shoot them in the superstructure, the area raised above the hull of the ship. And that's going to be the lightest armored, and you're going to be able to penetrate that and detonate the shells internally without getting a lot of overpens. Uh, shooting lower on the ship, the amount of armor that it has to go through, you might have uh, some issues penetrating the actual armor. So. There we got a first example, looking at the destroyer, we're able to shoot them, and we're going to get, you can see that leftmost icon that pops up on the right hand side of the screen. Those are detonations internally, that's what you want with AP shells, and you see we're getting quite a bit of those with these uh, British AP shells, so destroyers do need to be wary of these cruisers just because they're shooting AP. You see those white shells flying at you, uh, do not think that you're safe because that's not the case with these ones. If you noticed a moment ago, we did knock out that engine. They are going to be effective against uh, engines and steering gears on the destroyers as well. So, destroyers, I, again, we've only played the Danae so far, but I'm expecting these cruisers to be quite effective against you. Uh, Clemson here, we're going to just come around this island here. But we do get spotted. I was expecting there to be a third ship behind them. I thought maybe this, uh, whatever this is over here, Omaha or whatever, uh, might have been a part of this initial group, but then we do see the other cruiser behind them to the left. So look at the angles on this. The Duguay lightly um, armored. You're going to get a lot of overpens for most cruisers shooting at this ship. Not the case with this one. He's going to beach himself here, I believe. Or, yeah, he does beach himself there. And we're ripping Citadels left and right on that ship. Destroyer, I'm considering the bigger threat. I am angled towards the torps and turning, so we do dodge the expected salvo from the doogie. But the Clemson, I do want to get rid of if possible. Unfortunately, a good chunk of my guns were already obstructed by that island, but we did hit him some more. And then we're going to turn our attention back to the doogie here and finish him off. Again, most ships shooting at this ship, uh, aside from destroyers, and these British cruisers are going to have a hard time with the AP hitting those citadels. They're going to be passing through that ship before the fuse goes off, and that's the overpens we were talking about earlier. Not the case with the short fuse ones. So very dangerous for cruisers, and especially broadside cruisers, but even angled that doogie, the lightly armored one you saw, we did get some opening salvos on them. Uh, heavily armored cruisers, when they're angled in on you, you're going to want to shoot up a little bit and try and hit them in the superstructure if you can. You will be getting bounces, uh, ricocheting off the sides of those steeply angled ships. I think we'll be demonstrating that more in the second game. In fact, this game's just about to wrap up. I think I just wanted to show this one because it was kind of an interesting du uh, duel. And we're, I just want to demonstrate this ship's capability of pushing in fairly aggressively. Even though it's a lightly armored target, we didn't encounter a lot of resistance. Those ships didn't do a very good job shooting us. They were mostly trying to torpedo us or whatever. But 
the weapons platform on this system is effective. And you, I think that's going to be the standard up and down the line. But you do need to respect uh, the Danae's guns, even though it's one of the more fun ships to shoot at in the game. <laughs> Uh, just an early scouting report on these ships while we look at the end screen here. Um, from what I'm hearing from PC players and Intel that I have available on the web and so on and so forth, I think the Emerald supposedly is like the Dene up a tier, probably kind of the dud of the line at tier 4. Uh, tier 5 I haven't heard a lot about, but a little bit better from what I understand. And then tier 6, the Fiji. A lot of people say that's one of their favorite cruisers on the PC version. I expect that one to be quite effective, and the Edinburgh uh, Tier 7 also sounds very effective. So if you've taken my advice, you've been kind of practicing your cruiser game, working on your fundamentals, I think we're going to have a pretty good time playing this line when it comes out here in uh, just, whatever, two weeks or whatever it is, so coming up. Uh, here we got the same map, obviously we got a center spawn here, a little bit different ship composition as well. Not planning on aggressively contesting this cab. Uh, we are more centrally located, so we do need to be a little bit defensive. I'm planning on playing behind this island here once we spot. I'm trying to potentially provide a little bit of early spotting. You'll notice I did have Makawa spec'd out early on my Fraser build. From what I understand, these cruisers should be pretty good when it comes to concealment. And if that holds true once we get the line released, I think having a good uh, level Makawa on there, helping that concealment will uh, be improving the survivability of the line so that remains to be seen what we get when they're released but that's my early thoughts on how i'm going to be playing this one here we do have a battleship right off the bat and you'll be seeing we're going to be shooting higher up we're going to be aiming about halfway up the ship on these and that's what the intention on hitting the upper hull which is usually light lightly armored compared to the lower hull the water line shots and uh, if they drift up a little bit in the superstructure, that's ideal. That's kind of what we're trying to shoot at here. And these are max range shots on a, actually a fairly heavily armored battleship. And we are getting damage here. It's not going to be groundbreaking or game changing damage at that range necessarily. Not on that ship. But effective nonetheless. And that's what we're trying to shoot at there. Just up on the ship. We don't want to be shooting waterline. Even close range with those short fuses, again, there's multiple layers of, layers of armor on those battleships on the sides, and I don't think, I'm not expecting to be able to deal much, if any, damage on those types of ships on that type of shot. So, aim up higher, I think that's going to be where you're going to be having some success with these ones. Our uh, so-called friendly destroyer here, he's sitting in a cloud, he's not helping at all. The, the ship is reliant on other ships spotting for it, you can't be in a frontline position in this one. We're actually getting spotted by an unknown position as well, which is very frustrating. So, getting a little ticked off at that teammate, obviously this is a low tier game, so probably can't expect too much from the average player at this tier in terms of understanding their roles when it comes to spotting and stuff like that, but that is frustrating, and you are probably going to want to be playing amongst your teammates with these lines, at least, uh, you know, early on, until you get some tools later on to spot. But there's, I don't think there's going to be planes. I think we're probably going to be having sonar, heal, and then smoke at the higher tiers. So I I don't think this, this line's going to have the ability to spot for itself. Here we got a T-22 again, another destroyer. And we're just aiming for the fat part of the ship, just trying to increase our chances on hitting that thing. But big chunks of damage on the thing. Again, it's not something that they want to get involved with. Broadside cruisers, straight up waterline shots. That's what we're going for. We're trying to hit those citadels. Longer range, it might be a little bit harder. I am working on improving my Yamamoto, getting that AP uh, penetration at distance maxed. Because, again, we're only shooting an AP in this line. We're going to want to maximize the uh, effectiveness of those shells. So... If you're planning on running this line, I would get Yamamoto at least, you know, mid to high mid levels if you can. We do have two more Sundays before the line's released, so you can kind of plan ahead for your builds and kind of prioritize what you need. You need a good commander to run the line, obviously, so if you don't have any points in Fraser or Tenet, I would prioritize that. Then I would go Yamamoto if he's pretty low, and then maybe Makawa or something along those lines to kind of complement the build. 
Kuma here coming in at a steep angle. We're not expecting a lot of results shooting at the sides of the ship. We aim up. Again, we're trying to hit the superstructure here. This is a smaller superstructure than battleships, obviously. But once he starts to turn, then we drop the shot down to the waterline. And we're going to attempt to hit those citadels, which is more um, in the back of the ship, I believe, for these Japanese cruisers, at least at these tiers. But uh, decent damage hitting it in the middle there. And that's the meteor part of the ship. Usually you're going to get a little bit more damage there. But once he was steeply angled, you know, initially, go ahead and try and aim up a little bit. See what happens. I mean, you got you got to keep an eye on the uh, indicators on the right there to see what's going on with these shells and react accordingly. But you're not going to be able to adjust the shell type. You got to adjust the aim point. So that's going to be the key for the entirety of the line here. And uh, I think this is the end coming here. So not a problem killing the ship with that angle presented. Obviously, these are lightly armored and susceptible to incoming damage but you can see we got double our HP in both these games not extraordinary games but I thought they were pretty good for demonstrating the shell characteristics and get you start thinking about that ahead of time so hope you enjoyed it if you did please hit the thumbs up new to the channel consider subscribing questions comments leave them below I do love to hear from you and we'll see y'all later all right peace